We all love a bargain. And with supermarkets nowadays stocking their shelves with a much broader range of good quality whiskey, I thought it was about time I revisited those shelves and picked out five superb supermarket single malts that I think may just surprise you. Welcome back, Dram Fam, to the Whiskey Diet. I know many of you are fairly well versed in what you do and do not like, and many of you have ventured beyond the supermarket to online specialist retailers. But if you're like me, your whiskey journey probably started in the supermarket, and quite honestly, I've completely forgotten what it is they have on offer. Now, even two years ago, when I first started getting into whiskey, they didn't have some of the whiskies that I'm seeing on those shelves. Now, these are whiskies that I've discovered outside of the supermarket and have gone back in and have now noticed them on the shelves. Now, maybe you're someone that's just starting a whiskey collection. Um, I thought this would be a really interesting exercise initially to see if I could actually build a collection of whiskies from the supermarket alone. And to be quite honest, there was quite a lot of really good stuff on offer. So I ended up just narrowing it down to picking five whiskies that I thought reflected you know, good quality. I tried to keep them all around the £40 mark. I think that's kind of the sweet spot for affordability and quality. And you will notice that they are all single malts. That is just by chance. Um, they are just the whiskies that I picked out. If you are looking for a good quality blend, I highly recommend checking out my review of the Black Bottle, which, to be quite honest, I thought was surprisingly good for 18 quid. That's linked in the card above in the description down below. Now, of these five bottles that I'm gonna show you, I did actually end up, I think I picked up about eight in total, and some of them didn't quite make the cut. Now, this is a place of positivity. I'm not gonna tell you about the ones that I didn't like. I'm gonna tell you about the ones I did with the hope that you will take my recommendation. Now, these are in no particular order. This is just the order that I felt they best sat in when I rode them all up on the table earlier. But that's enough of that. Let's get down to talking about some whiskies. First on the list, the Tobermory 12. This is, of course, a 12-year-old whiskey from the Tobermory distillery based on the Isle of Mull, making it an island whiskey. It is bottled at 46.3%. It is unchill filtered. It is all natural color, all things that we love to see. It is completely unpeated, unlike its Le Chic counterpart. Le Chic and Tobermory both distilled in the same distillery. Le Chic is just the name for the peated stuff. Tobermory, completely unpeated. And this cost me £42, which is the most expensive bottle on the list. Now, why did I think that this belongs on the list? Because it's got all of the things we love to see. 46%, unchill filtered, all natural colour. And quite honestly, I think this is bloody good liquid for about £40. It's probably one of the least known distilleries on this list, but quite honestly, I think it makes up for it in flavour. On the nose, green apple stew pears, and it's got a really nice kind of salty savouriness going on underneath it. On the palate, it's fruity, but the barley comes through. You can taste the malt. On the back end, it's got a savoury saltiness. Oh, it's got a bit of a honeydew melon going as well. The, the real kind of apple and pear sweetness dies off and leaves behind just a really interesting finish. Quite honestly, this feels like a very honest whiskey, a really good quality honest whiskey. Something that more than competes with some of the more well-known distilleries, especially at a 12-year-old age statement as well. So, slange. Next up on the list, we have the Talisker 10. Many of you will know a few episodes back, I put this up against the Talisker Sky to see which I thought was the best value for money. And this won by um, quite a long way. I'm not gonna go too much into the tasting notes in this episode. I'll drop a link, uh, card, whatever, to the review I did of this alongside the Sky. But quite honestly, I think this has got an awful lot to offer for the money that you can get it for. Bottled at 45.8%, it is 
artificially colored and it is chill filtered. Heated to around 16 to 22 ppm. You can get this down as low as 30 pounds in a supermarket. Really nice peppery wood smoke nose, like a fruity barbecue smoky palette with just more of that kind of sweet peppery finish. Like I say, drop a link to the review down below. So check that out. Next up on the list, we have the classic Laddie from Brook Laddie. Many of you have probably noticed this bottle on the shelf because of the color, but it, I think it's often overlooked. So this is a no age statement whiskey from the Brook Laddie distillery. It is all natural color. It is unchill filtered and it is bottled up at a roaring 50% ABV. I picked this up for only 41 pounds. Now we like to talk about transparency. We like to talk about you know, honest numbers, unchill filtered, all natural color, bottling upwards of 46% ABV. Well, what I think is really cool about this is there is a code at the bottom here. If you go on the website and you type that code in, it will tell you exactly what went into this bottle, exactly, cask numbers and everything. So this particular bottle, which is a vatting of 79 casks, five vintages, three barley types and 10 cask types, including we had some bourbon in there, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Sherry, Amarone. That kind of honesty for me goes an awful long way. It's a great talking point. It's something interesting to talk about. It goes beyond just the liquid in the glass. But speaking of salted lemons, creamy vanilla, honey sweetness. I actually forget quite often quite how sweet this whiskey is. Uh, and I think my brain just associates it with being a very bright, salty, citrusy whiskey, but it's actually surprisingly sweet. On the palate, toffee and demerara sugar up front. Really nice, like bright vanilla notes. Bit of like a pastry thing going on as well. And then it kind of transforms into this slightly salty, bright, citrusy whiskey. Towards the finish, orange like bitter orange peel almost like an old-fashioned kind of back end with just a little bit more bitterness and right on the tail end sweetness again it brightens up and all the honey notes come back through to me this is a really honest good quality exciting whiskey as a no age statement i think a lot of people can be quite put off by that um in some instances you know maybe assuming it lacks complexity but I just don't agree. If you're someone that likes to really talk about the whiskey you're drinking, if you're into the technicalities, if you want to know how this whiskey was made, this is for you. Next on the list, we have a whiskey that really took me by surprise. This is the Glen Fiddick 15. Now, bear with me. I know what you're thinking. This is a 15 year old from the Glenfiddich distillery. It is chill filtered, it is artificially colored and it is bottled at 40%, but this is a 15 year old age statement for 38 pounds. And I think flavor wise, it stands up. This is a sherried whiskey from a well-known distillery with a good age statement on it. To some people, that's important. If you're quite new to whiskey and you haven't quite discovered the wonders of independent bottlings, if you're not quite convinced by no age statements, you look to security for your investment in a good quality bottle of whiskey. And I think, you know, a 15 year old age statement from Glenfiddich for less than 40 quid, Let's see how it tastes. So what's really interesting about this whiskey is that it's a Solera vatting. Now Solera vattings are basically just a pine tank that's used to mix all of the different casks together. And it's only ever kind of half emptied at a time. And then the next batch is made, it goes in with all of that. So while it is 15 years old at its youngest, who can say how old? Well, I can tell you how old because they last emptied it in 1998. So there is whiskey, there is liquid in there from 1998 going into this whiskey. Onto the tasting notes. It's the complete opposite of the Brook Laddie. This is rich. This is a bit spicy. The fruit is mellow. It's a lot richer. Raisins, heather, and a, a kind of toastiness to it. Onto the palate. While it is a little watery, 
down at 40%. It's very rounded. It's it's very mellow. It's very soft. But it's rich and it's spicy. Stone fruits, almost rye-like on the back end. Finish-wise, it's ginger and tobacco. Almost apple crumble fruitiness. It's so different from, for instance, like the Brook Laddie. I think if you're new to drinking whiskey and you're not quite sure what it is that you like, this is a great place to start because this is so easy drinking. It's just super easy to get along with. And lastly, one for you peat monsters out there, we have the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. This is, of course, a five-year-old whiskey from the Ardbeg Distillery. It is an Isla whiskey peated at a massive 50 to 55 ppm. It is unchill filtered, it is all natural colour, and it is bottled at 47.4%, and you can pick this up for about £35 a bottle. And I think a lot of people would wince at the fact that it's got a five-year-old age statement on the bottle, but quite honestly, I like that honesty. I like the transparency. I like that they're not hiding behind a no age statement something rather they're actually putting that pride of place on the front of the label now what do i think on the nose it's piney it's tar it's creosote it's everything you want from a heavily peated whiskey it's got a surprising sweetness underneath that don't get me wrong it does take you a little while to um to attenuate to to get accustomed to the smokiness but Overall, it's got quite a sweet nose on it. Palette-wise, right up front, to be honest, honey. Right behind that vegetal seaweed. Like, all the saltiness and all that smokiness, all of that peat comes through. Really nice and peppery, white pepper, really hot. This is a hot whiskey. Finish-wise, stem ginger, rye bread. And I, got a, I get a very specific tasting note of over brewed tea now that's uh, maybe a contribution of that mouthfeel it's got a drying heavily peated mouthfeel i think this is an exciting whiskey especially if you are someone that's really into your pee this this is good stuff and it's 35 pounds a bottle lots of people will tell you to spend the extra what is it it's about eight nine ten quid more and go for the um go for the Ardbeg 10 I don't always agree with that. The Ardbeg 10 is delicious, but I think, you know, the Ardbeg Wee Beastie, it's exciting and it's fiery, so give it a go. Now, I did have a few other bottles in mind when I uh, went into this experiment, some which I knew existed out there, which I wasn't able to get hold of. So some honorable mentions as well as the Bunnahaven 12. Now I know that is available in some supermarkets. Um, unfortunately, I did not find it on my travels. I know you can get it in some more premium supermarkets in the UK, but unfortunately I couldn't find it in the ones I went to today. The Ben Romack 10, another exceptional good quality whiskey unfortunately did see it in two supermarkets sold out in both next Pendedin, the welsh whiskey it's very good in fact it was probably one of the first whiskies that i actually genuinely enjoyed but i just didn't feel like it had as much character as some of the other bottles here it's a very very good whiskey and it is very certainly very good for the price but i think some of these would offer you a little bit more bang for your buck and lastly, which I'm sure I'm going to get in the comments, is the Laphroaig 10. Now, for my heavily peated option, it was down to the Laphroaig 10 or the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. But I think Laphroaig has just got a... It's got a certain Laphroaiginess, which I think some people might not get on with. And I think a lot of people just assume that all peated whiskey just tastes like Laphroaig, which isn't the case. So I thought I'd go for the slightly safer, in my opinion option which was the Ardbeg Wee Beastie and if you find that you are a big peat fan then maybe venture back out to your local supermarket maybe next time you're picking up a loaf of bread maybe pick up a bottle of the Laphroaig 10 as well but anyway that's enough for me thank you all very much for watching if you've liked this video please do click the like button down below and if you'd like to support the channel please do consider subscribing
Let me know down in the comments if any of these are your favourites, if you've got any supermarket whiskies that I may have missed, or what your opinion is on my list, because I'm always interested to hear what you lot think. And on that note, Slangevar.